So I'm Nicole. It's nice to meet you. I am working actually with a virtual classroom. We're calling it a learning pod because it does have all children on the spectrum and their skill sets are ranging from a second to fifth grade curriculum. And so it is that battle of bringing them all together in a learning environment, but meeting everybody's needs um, at the same time. So that is how I found Bottle and my students are adore it they love it and they consider it like the best game in the world so i think that's most of it there <laughs> awesome uh my name is nick Hoover. i work for bottle uh i'm the uh, teacher and parent success manager uh, my background is i worked in education for the last 14 years the last eight years i worked as a instructional coach in an elementary school a math instructional coach so um, i sort of fell in love with bottle and found myself uh, working for them uh, which has been a very interesting journey. So uh, I'm excited to hear more about how Nicole's using it in a room. Um, yep. Yeah, so my name is Edna Martinson, co-founder of Bottle Learning. Super excited to hear from Nicole today. Um, I'm going to jump into a really quick uh, 10 minutes on Bottle and uh, the work that we are doing to increase engagement with K through six special education um, math students and so just diving into that really quickly. So what is Bottle? We are a gamified education platform. Um, we're making learning fun. So we're coming from a, 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 a games first approach. We really want to assist teachers um, in special ed, you know, who have students who you know, maybe tend to shut down when they get frustrated um, or have a little bit of challenges in, in in focus and learning and give them a fun way to really enjoy math. Um, we use AI to personalize learning for each student. We know that every student learns differently. And so we want to come in and be able to, again, help teachers facilitate learning and personalized learning for each of their students. And then we want to also provide real time reporting for for educators so they can know exactly where each student is at and what their exact learning gaps are. Um, we do have currently a minimum requirement on bottle. Um, so you need a laptop or Chromebook. Um, the browsers that work great is Safari, Chrome and Firefox. And actually, this says summer, but we are super close in a, a couple of weeks here. Um, I would say February 1st, um, we will have that Android version, uh, that iOS version out so that you can use it on iPads and mobile as well. Um, so I'm going to jump in here and I just want to show the game part. Um, so this is the, this is the game. This is the student experience right here. Um, they have this, this 3D world that they get to customize and create. Um, and what we've done is we put a lot of, we put really all of the really fun engagement is tied to answering math questions and mastering math skills, um, which is really important for us not to make it all about, you know, the game, but make sure that they have, their, have, they have that math side to it. And so once students click this big green play button, it takes them into um, uh, where the math content is. So teachers are able to go in and create assignments, but if no assignment is created, then we use, um, our AI kind of determines the next best question based on the grade that the student is at. So if you assign the student to fourth grade, it'll be the next best question based on how they've been answering. Um, so these are, this is what the question screens look like. Uh, we do have um, some, some tools to help students as they're learning. So we've got like a, a sketch tool so they can, can write things out, um, you know, if they need to, Oh, I see the question, if I got that right. Oh, and I got it wrong. <laughs> I was not paying attention. So this helps because this shows you, so once they get a question wrong, we've got a rationale that shows an explanation of why, you know, why this is the correct answer, um, which helps a lot, and especially with remote learning and virtual instruction. Um, and then along with that, we've got a text-to-speech that reads out, um, reads out the questions as well as reads out the rationales 
for them. And then this TV screen is instructional video. And so this has been really, we've heard about a ton of great feedback from teachers on this to say, hey, it's great that they have this in there. Um, so even if the teacher is not present exactly on the Zoom session or in person, they still have that additional instruction. Um, and then I will go ahead and jump over. So here, what we use is a three streak system. So I got the first one wrong. Um, if I get three questions correct in a row, then I get to play a mini game. So it's sort of like a mini brain break. Um, it was fun this, this morning. We were able to, to, um, to shadow observe Miss um, Nicole's class. And it was awesome that some of the students said, hey, we should make the streaks longer. So instead of three question streaks, it could be a five question streak. So there's a lot of, of um, updates that we'll be making on that front as well. Um, and then, for sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the teacher portal. So this right here is um, where teachers would go to add students. Here's where you can view curriculum. If you hover over, you'd see example questions, just so you know, you know exactly um, what type of questions are in those specific skills. Go ahead and meet this site. And then you can also click here to create assignments for your students. Um, and these assignments really help, you know, you can select which student will get the assignments since they're not maybe all on the same level. And then you can type in whatever skill you might need. For example, if it is fractions, um, let's say third grade fractions, we can see here we can pick the skill and you can actually pick multiple skills um, if, you, if you've been teaching multiple things that you want them to practice on. And then we allow you to determine the parameters of whether you want them to answer per question, um, make it random or in sequence. And then once you submit this, you're able to see the assignment here and track as your student answers each question and what their performance is on that. And then the very last thing I'll show you is the reports. Um, we've got uh, four really great reports, a progress report on how your students are progressing. Um, this learning gaps report um, helps to show exactly, you know, what are the gaps that students are having um, based on the, the skill that you've assigned them to, what is the, the adjusted skill that they really need to practice and focus on. Um, and that is a big overview of this uh, teacher portal. So I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen at the moment and hand it over to um, Nicole, who's been using Bottle for um, math with her students and would love to get your, um, just hear how it's been going in your classroom. I know Nick has some questions that he's got for you. So, Nicole, just to start, I mean, will you tell us a little bit about your class makeup and the kind of kids that you're working with? Oh, you're still muted. There you go. Thank you. So, my class makeup is um, the group of students. They are third and fourth grade together as a cohort, basically. Um, they are from all across the country and the world. So, I have students in the far reaches from one side in Egypt all the way across to California on the other side. So aside from the challenges of time zones, it's great to have these resources. Bottle has been super beneficial, especially for my student in Egypt, because sometimes timing, um, that's when they're having dinner. So we can still say, you know what, it's 25 minutes today, let's go into it. And then I have a separate um, tutoring time that I schedule with him. And I go into that teacher portal and I'm able to look at his results and see where we're having strikes and where we're having wins. Mm -hmm. So we can go back and look at those individual questions and I can either copy and paste them onto my whiteboard. We do everything on Zoom. So let me just add that in there. Um, and then we can work through problems together. And then during our tutoring time, aside from the class, we can also do bottle. And so okay. um, all of my students do have a learning disability. For the most part, um, we do have ADD, ADHD. I do have students on the spectrum, and I do have some extreme dyslexia. Mm. So for a typical day, what does math class look like? You said you guys yeah. use Zoom and, and bottles. So how does that usually, what does that usually look like? 
Yep, so um, I can actually use Miss Edna as an example. So if you could open up the gaming. So usually when it is our math time, we do, you know, announce everybody go into bottle. Um, most of the parents have saved it. So it's a quick tab for them or they have the tab already open. They've saved passwords. So the student just is clicking to opening and get into it. And then when we're in, two things are happening at the same time for us. So the students are playing and we have an open sharing. So everyone stays muted unless they need to share. And they'll politely say, Ms. Nicole, I need to share my screen. And so we'll go into a screen share and they'll start playing their game or we'll work on a question that they're at. So everything starts with the same as, did you watch your video? Because that always gives them a little bit of insight and it takes away some of the overwhelm sometimes when there's a bunch of words there. Mm -hmm. um, some of my students with the dyslexia definitely utilize the, um, the reading option, the voice to text. I'm sorry, I forgot what the name was. Um, so we go through that and then they also have the video. So it's something that they're listening to and seeing. So it helps them to reiterate that. And then we'll literally annotate on our screen and we'll work through the problem together. And so usually um, a lot of my students want me to stay with them until they've done their three questions and move to their streak. So as Edna had just shown us, what's nice about that is when I go, I can open up my teacher portal when we're not screen sharing and I can look and see what the last two or three questions were that they did and what the curriculum is that's assigned to it. And so while they are more than clever in getting their answers right and earning their points, I can be the clever teacher who's then assigning them the matching curriculum for them to do on their own time that relates to the questions that we just did. So I can make sure that we're reinforcing that knowledge as they go. And we try to do that. The students have gotten really good at it. The first few times it was a little bit awkward, um, but they kind of put their little hand up and they'll say, can I be next? And we'll just kind of go around and keep screen sharing. Well, and having watched it this morning, it was extremely impressive how they shared and let each other go ahead of each other. And it was very impressive. So it looked like you guys have worked really hard on that. Um, what was your math class like before you guys started using Bottle? And what is, how has Bottle maybe helped make things a little bit easier? So originally, I had a math class for each grade level. Mm. And one of the biggest challenges is that my students are not all at their grade level of learning. Mm. Um, so what I can do, and I'm going to screen share my screen really quick if I can, is that I have my students, um, they may need to be a fourth grader, but their curriculum is not. So there is... Um, I don't want to say shame in their game, but they still sign in into a fourth grade class. And, but I have that communication with their parents and we talk about where their curriculum is and where their success is. And so if you'll look, I do have some students that although they're in fourth grade, they're currently on a second grade curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, and what's nice is that for some state testing, if you can show the curriculum they're working on, they get certain, um, they get to bypass some of the testing. Um, so I know that's unique to different states but it does give them a chance to be at different places. And I have some students then who are also working ahead. So they're in fourth grade, but I have them on the sixth grade curriculum so that I can keep advancing them. Um, I have a couple that have started, um, fourth graders that started in third grade that are finishing their third grade curriculum from start to finish. So they're gonna be able to pace themselves into fourth grade and I can still keep them moving along at a pace that works for them. And they're not feeling that pressure of like, today's the day I have to learn task A, but maybe that's a three-day task or something else they might pick up faster. I love it. I mean, I, I just love that they can be in your fourth grade class, even though they're all on different levels. I think that that's awesome that that's possible to happen. Um, what are some, well, what, let me say this. What is your favorite, some of your favorite features of Bottle, things you like about it? And then what is something maybe you would like implemented or added to Bottle? So we did try some competitive software to start mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, some of it was very stoic mm. and it was like, get the answer and this is it. And here's your hint. And it was just that it didn't, the children didn't relate to it. And I think as an educator, I felt like maybe it was above my level too at some point. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we tried some of those. We did try some other ones that was almost too much gaming that the children spent more time talking to each other about my pet has this accessory versus actually doing the math. 
So I think this was a really great balance. I love the engagement and the interaction. I like that it's still focused on math, but it's giving them that little something. And um, I love, as we saw today, that they all refer to it as a game. So they enjoy it. Um, and what I think, to come back to your answer, what I love the most about it is when we started implementing it, um, we would go to our next class and I'd be like, are you paying attention? They're like, I can't, I'm still playing bottle. <laughs> so I think there's successes that come when you have to tell your students to stop doing math. You know, right. because they're into it and they're like, but I just need 14 more drops in my head. <laughs> I need 14 more knowledge drops. You know, so they're definitely, it's creating something for them where they're very comfortable with it. They're comfortable using it as a tool. They're comfortable with the resources and they're finding it fun and engaging. And then they come back the next day and they're like, oh my gosh, guess what I bought, mm. you know? And then everybody wants to catch up. So I think those, that's what I love is the engagement for it and the ease of use for the students. Um, and from a teacher standpoint, I think ease of use for me to be able to click and see where they were. And if some, a student didn't ask me for specific help that day, I can still go back of house which if my computer is fast enough, I'll open um, it's thinking, but I can literally look and see what my student has done. And I can also share it with a parent because sometimes I have to have that difficult conversation to say, this isn't the grade level for your child to be mm. successful right now. So let's really focus on the foundation and mine is not opening back. Oh, now it is. <laughs> my computer is always trying to prove me wrong. Um, so what's really nice at this is when I look at it, I can look almost into their brain a little bit because I feel like it gives me the option that I'm looking at the skill sets. This is what I was talking about here when I need to, I'm going to take, when I want to go back and reassign an assignment because my super smart student actually made me help them answer all their questions to earn their points. So I can look here and say, okay, we're going to assign a couple questions for homework tonight that are based on that. And then also sometimes I like to scroll and just see the consistency of my student. I can see how many questions they're answering in a class. I can see how many they're answering correctly. And then I also, if I, of course, Andrew's not going to have an example, but if I see a bunch of questions or my students suddenly getting the answer wrong, I can come over here and I tend to spend a lot of time looking at the amount of time my student spent. Of course, I'm the worst at annotating on the screen. If my students were here, they would be all over it. But I like to look and be like, oh, well, we answered this one in eight seconds. So if I see that they answered a bunch of them really fast and got them wrong, I can still reach out to my parent and say, hey, like, did something happen? And they'll be like, oh, we were getting ready to leave or we were having lunch. Or all of a sudden, the student asks if they can run to the bathroom. I know that that was them losing focus and we mm -hmm. can go back. And if I also, I like to look and see, for the students that are spending a lot of time. Um, so here, 227 seconds, 197 seconds. So although we got it right, it makes me think that that child maybe needs a little bit more time. So those are things that I can go back on and hit. So that's my love list, very long. Um, my different list, um, from the educational side, I do like to see more questions before a streak. Okay. Or maybe that's that it's progressive, that as they grade up um, and their curriculum increases, that maybe that's more. Fourth grade needs four, fifth grade needs five or something mm, like that. I like that. Well, in your kids gave, I mean, I was so surprised when your students told us that today. And they said, man, we'd really like the streaks to be longer. I mean, I never would have thought that would have been the case, but that was really helpful. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing some of the things that we all are. <laughs> right. Day. Well, and that was my next, so my next question was about what would your students would say about bottle? I know both me and Edna got a very lengthy list of the things they would like to change or add to it. Not change, they love it, but clearly that they would like to improve on. Um, mm -hmm. But what would you say your students would say about bottle? I, I mean, overall, just based on the excitement they had knowing that you were coming into the room. Um, like they're, they're so attached to this. They love it. It's interesting for me that over um, Thanksgiving vacation, over Christmas vacation, I was seeing that they were active because I can come and look and see last day that they played. Um, so it's something that they're going to. So when they're getting bored even of playing too much Minecraft or too much Roblox, which 
who knew that was possible, mm -hmm. um, but they're hopping in here and they're doing it. And when I share this, so weekly, I take a, a screenshot basically of a segment of this and we use class dojo, um, free plug for them. And, but I post it to the student's portfolio so the parents can have it to see. And sometimes if a child is struggling, I will also cut and paste or screenshot it and show it to them and say, just so you know what we're working on and we're having these struggles. So this is where you can support at home. Um, so I think my parents are receptive to it. They appreciate it as gamified education. My students think it's fun to play. They love all the accessories and the stuff. So I think just across the board, we saw a lot of thumbs up today. So I think mm -hmm. they would say it is thumbs up. Right, definitely. <laughs> Um, and you just mentioned how you use Class Dojo with it. Are there any other sort of educational tools that you might suggest to teachers? Um, maybe that you might use in other classes or anything that you've found um, that you enjoy like Bottle? Um, do you want me to give you the names of other? Sure. I mean, yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, I will say, so we, had, we did use Brainsy for math. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually for math, reading and typing, I, I discontinued using it for math. Mm -hmm. I felt like some of the levels were too off and my students felt like they had to land in one spot and do everything in that area before they could move. And I mm -hmm. felt they needed to do like trips around. So it was a little bit of confusion on how they would be most successful and they were getting really frustrated with levels seeming to be above where they needed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like it more as a review of the previous year at the start of a school year to see where a student is. But I do like Brainsy's typing. It's fun. And I think kids right now have to understand the keyboard and that yeah. the better they do with typing and hand-eye coordination, it helps in all the other pieces of it. And then I will say the other software that my class absolutely loves is Night Zookeeper. And we use that for writing. It's mm -hmm. a lot of creativity. They get to create their own animals and write stories about them. Mm -hmm. And then we incorporate into that. And they, we do it across all of my grades so that they, um, they, the expectation is different at each grade level, but it allows them to freely write and use things. And then some of the things we do to adjust, of course, is that some use a dictation app because we're looking more at descriptive words mm -hmm. and persuasive arguments. Um, versus their technical skill of putting a piece of paper and a pen together and making that right. So it's understanding where their, their hiccups are or their hurdles and how we can work around them and still reach the end goal together. Right. Okay. That was super helpful. Yes. That was exactly, that exactly what we were looking for. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, I mean, I think that's all of my questions. You, did a wonderful job explaining all of the different details of bottle. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. You're very welcome. Um, awesome. Uh, that sounds great. Uh, if there's any questions for Ms. Nicole, please put them in the chat. Um, and, you know, any additional questions that we get, you know, after this as well, um, uh, when we share uh, this webinar, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, this is super insightful. And it's always great to hear from an educator's perspective who's actually using it. Right. Um, it helps, you know, it helps other educators. It helps us as a team get better as well. Um, so yeah, super grateful. This is, this is awesome.